Hello, hello. Hi, my name is True. I'm a developer advocate at Loom, and my talk is the real plugins are the friends we made along the way. Sweet, so a little bit more about me. As I mentioned before, I do work as a developer advocate at Loom. I just started recently, February of 2022, and it's been amazing. I used to be a software engineer, and now I call myself a reformed software engineer. <laughs> I also stream in the software and game development category on Twitch, and I started streaming during uh, May 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic, because I had nothing better to do, and it was a great use of my time. <laughs> I also make a lot of content on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube geared towards programming. Why I'm talking at a design conference, I have no idea. Sweet, so let me step back and talk about my experience with Figma. So ever since my first full-time job, which was around four years ago, I've known about and worked with Figma. And every designer since then, since those last four years, has, has used Figma. And so I've become more familiar with the tool as a developer, usually like looking at mocks, you know, seeing what the designers can come up with and recreating it. But not on, like recently, I haven't used it just as a de developer, but also a designer. I've designed my own things using Figma. And most recently, I did a little bit of interior design with it. So I mocked up our office redesign using like a 10 pixel to one inch like proportions and redid my office in that way. So as some stories go, one day I was on Twitter <laughs> and what I saw changed my life. So I saw a post that Figma posted about uh, building something involving widgets. And I was very curious what that meant. So I signed up. And I got an email a couple days later saying that I got approved. And so I was really interested because prior to this moment, I've never really launched something of my own. Um, on stream, I built this thing called drydrawing.com. And that was like a sort of a project to kind of test my technical capabilities. And that was the one thing that I've launched and I was super proud of. So I was like, you know, maybe widgets could be the next project that I work on and actually build something from. And so, yeah, the only things prior to this moment were stuff that I worked on at my job and this dry drawing app. And I also actually never used a plugin <laughs> inside Figma before this. And so I was like, what is a plugin? What is a widget? Let's, tr let's find out. So I got access to the beta Slack. And I mostly lurked for the first couple of weeks, just sneaking at what other people were working on and seeing if I could drive inspiration from some of the posts that I saw there. And so then one day, someone from Figma posted something along the lines of, hey, if anyone works with the widget API in public or on stream, we'd love to support and promote it. And so I was like, hey, that'd be kind of awesome for Figma to promote my stream. And it also gave me a really good idea of what to work on next, because I was kind of running uh, dry on ideas. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, let's build this widget in public and see how it goes. So funny story. <laughs> I've actually never worked with the widget API or plugin API before I started that stream. Um, bad decision on my part. I don't know why I sometimes just click the go live button without thinking through what I want to work on, but I did it. <laughs> so regardless, my idea kind of formed during the stream. So I was talking to chat and I was like, you know, what could someone that's using FigJam find useful in a widget? And I was like, you know, people that are using FigJam maybe are very like organized people. And what do organized people like? Pomodoro timers. So I was like, let's build a Pomodoro timer widget. And so funny story about this is then I opened up FigJam. And the first thing it showed me was, guess what's new? A timer within FigJam itself. So my idea kind of, I quickly scratched that idea. I was like, you know, they already built it. But I want to note here that my idea was so good that Figma built it themselves. Just need to point that out. So, you know, I thought there's, all these ideas that people are building, like I mentioned pre previously, I was lurking in the Slack, and a lot of these ideas were focused on productivity, like I said, or text-based. And so I was like, what's something new that I can bring to widgets that no one's really messed with before? And so I thought of audio. That was the first thing that came to my mind. And so for me, while I was on stream, I was thinking it would be really fun to have some widget that could replace sound when I click on it. And so the first idea for soundboard was actually a big soundboard that contained all the sounds that you could possibly want. So one widget would have multiple sounds. But then while I was programming it, it got kind of hard to edit those sounds or delete ones that you've already added. So I scratched that and came up with something very simple. It would be just one widget, which would have one instance of one sound, so that if you wanted to delete it, you would just remove that widget. Or if you wanted to edit it, it would be easy to edit one sound. So that's, that was my widget, soundboard. So I ended up actually building this soundboard on stream, and I shipped it in time for the public widget launch. And this was like one of my most proudest moments. <laughs> it was, I guess, the second thing that I've ever launched. 
And through the process of actually building it, I, I was stuck so many times because I mentioned previously that I never worked with the widget API or the plugin API prior to this. And so I was really proud of the fact that I was able to get stuck and then unstuck myself while hundreds of people were watching me, which was very stressful. But it was, it was just so, it made me feel like an actually good software engineer, and that was awesome. So I want to take a quick pause here. I talk a lot about you know, building, particularly streaming in public, and so I just want to talk through that. So people ask me all the time. <laughs> They're like, why do you choose to code in front of people? Um, they ask, is it incredibly anxiety inducing? Yes. How do you sit there and talk while coding? I don't code much. <laughs> and what happens when you get stuck and you just have to read documentation? Um, you give up. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But here's three main reasons why I choose to stream. The first one is to hold myself accountable. So I started streaming, like I mentioned, in the start of the pandemic in 2020. And the reason I started was I saw one of my friends, who's a PM at Twitch, streaming herself programming. And I was like, that's really interesting. Um, I've only ever really seen people play games. And I never thought that someone could program on stream and that people would actually be interested enough to watch that. And so I was like, you know, maybe I could bring those two skill sets that I have together as well and also start streaming. So I bought a like $500 pre-built computer off Amazon, uh, a webcam and a mic. Those were very hard to get, but I got them. And I set up my stream and I started going for it. And for me, one of the main reasons, like I said, is to hold myself accountable. I had all these side project ideas that I never really had the time or the motivation to finish. Um, for, for my job, like I, I was working on a lot of front end, all that code, and I wanted to kind of work on things that weren't in that realm. So work on things that involved like back end or server side things. And so for me, this was kind of like when you're working out and you ask your friends to keep you accountable by messaging them when you're going to the gym or like sending tweets every day seeing, like, to show your progress. So it was kind of like that. And so I thought I would finish these side projects that I had if I built them in public because if I would stop working on them, people would judge me. And if that, I don't know if that's healthy or not, but that was kind of how I felt about it. So the second reason was I wanted to get better at coding. Um, so I really wanted to improve my coding skills and my technical communication skills. And so I worked on projects on stream specifically that would test my programming and debugging capabilities. And so a lot of these projects that I picked that I talked about previously was just outside of the realm of things that I did on my normal day to day, just so I could allow myself to learn new technologies and learn new stacks. I also wanted to get better at talking about code and being more technical in general when people would ask questions. Um, if you've noticed during my talk, I say a lot of things like stuff and things, and I wanted to kind of replace that lingo with better lingo, and I'm still working on this. It's very difficult, but hopefully it'll get better. And I also, the third and most important thing is I wanted to teach and help others. And this kind of came about a little bit later in my streaming career, but a lot of people have reached out to me saying that I've helped them because I'm someone that they relate to. And that's through me getting stuck on stream, you know, being frustrated at bugs. And it's really nice to hear people say that they're like motivated to work on their side projects because they see me working on mine on stream. And I also want to mention like networking is a very overused term, but streaming was a form of networking for me. I wanted to build friends. I wanted to build lasting relationships with people and have a close network of people that I could work with and collaborate with in the future. And this networking was um, bi-directional. It wasn't just me using others for whatever they could offer. I was also hoping to offer my knowledge and my skills to anyone who needed help in any way. Sweet. So let's go really quick back to the soundboard widget. So this widget in particular, I didn't build it because I wanted to monetize it or if there was any money to come out of it, or even for my job, or because someone told me to build this. <laughs> I built it for the sake of building it. And that's kind of the thesis for my talk, is that too often we get caught up with the incentive behind building things. And a lot of that could be like furthering your career or making money, like I mentioned. But not often enough do we really consider the value that exists in building things just for the sake of building things and the joy that comes from that. So for me, there was tons of benefits for building things for fun. <laughs> um, this Figma project in particular, I never felt close to burning out which is really surprising for me because a lot of my previous jobs, I felt burnout at almost every single one of them. And a lot of that came through a lack of internal motivation to continue to program and continue to code. And so for this project particularly, even when I hit the hard parts when things got really complicated or I didn't understand what was going on, 
I had this internal motivation to do it and complete it. And it felt really enriching because I've never had that feeling before, or I only had it in very small bursts. And so I was able to debug, look at documentation, and figure out how to use this API without ever using it before. And like I said previously, it made me feel like a really good software engineer. And I haven't felt that in a while. And so there's a lot of benefits also to kind of changing your mindset to think like this. There's that joy that I mentioned that's a part of it, but you also expand your technical or in general skill horizons. And so you work on things that you would never have normally worked on. I would have never worked on this Figma widget. <laughs> that would have never showed up in my full-time job as something to do. And I also got to meet a bunch of people that I never would have met before, and I got to see their perspectives and brought in my own worldview because of that. And a lot of this isn't just about benefiting your career. It's about benefiting you as a person, building those human connections and expanding who you are at the end of the day. And so yes, all of this is just widgets inside FigJam. But the connections that I made were real, or are real, I guess. And the knowledge that I learned along the way and the joy that I experienced is the real thing that matters. And so connections are key. Another one. <laughs> DJ Khaled. OK, speaking of keys, <laughs> I got really excited with the idea of building dumb things in Figma. And I also really, I don't know why, really, really resonated with audio. And so I decided to build a playable piano widget. And it was very simple. It was going to be just like you know the black and white keys of the piano. And if you use your mouse and click on it, it would play the sound. Or you know if you click on it and use your keyboard, you can play the piano as well. And so I streamed this as well. And I'm really, really glad I did because at Figma, they run an internal maker week where people can work on projects that they normally wouldn't work on as well. And so a couple of engineers, I don't know if they saw it through my stream or through a tweet, they actually reached out to me because one of the projects they're working on was a playable piano widget. And it was really awesome. I got to actually hop on a call with them, talk through how I handled my audio code, and they showed me how they made their piano widget look a lot better than mine. So it was cool. We got to like learn from each other. And I got to form this connection that I actually would never have formed had I not streamed this project or open sourced it, et cetera. And it was really awesome. And this is something that I normally would never work on, but I saw this joy in building a piano widget, so I went for it. And on that note, I've also had very amazing opportunities to work with brands that I never would have had the opportunity to work, for, work with before. And so, before I was a Loom employee, a full-time Loom employee, actually, I reached out to them and was able to partner with them on building a widget inside FigJam to embed Looms. And so this started as a part-time contracting gig where I was just trying to see you know, what APIs I could work with from Loom's side, how I could integrate it within FigJam in really interesting ways. And this turned into my full-time job, which is awesome. And with the Loom Embed 2, I reached out to someone from the Figma Slack because they were working on what embeds could look like within FigJam, specifically YouTube embeds. And they shared their code with me, which was incredibly helpful and much appreciated. And this is uh, TK made it um, from Twitter on Twitter. And he was super nice. This is exactly kind of what I said. I was like, hey, I saw that you worked on this. I was curious if your code was open source. And he's like, here you go. My code is messy, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Incredibly awesome dude. And it was just really nice to see the community, the Figma community, being so helpful to someone who is so new to plugin development. It was just really nice, really awesome. And yeah, so I built and I shipped the Loom Embed widget as well. And I also built most of this on stream too. And as usual, <laughs> my idea was so good <laughs> that Figma built it into FigJam as well, which rendered my widget obsolete. But kudos to them, it looks really good. <laughs> So yeah, on that note, um, through streaming Figma, specifically those plugins, I met so many amazing friends in design who use Figma day to day. And I absolutely adore these folks, uh, Manny and Seke, amazing people. And so specifically about Seke, Seke was actually really interested in building widgets. And I was able to give him advice on how to start and what's possible from all the widgets that I was building and experimenting with. And so I was able to help him set up a build process so he could write his, his widget in Vue because I set up a build process for React for me. And he actually recently launched, launched that Figgenda app on Product Hunt. And it's one of the nominees for the Community Awards. Amazing. And so now we're really close friends, me, Seke, Manny, and a couple other streamers. And we're working on a startup together. So it's really awesome. So yeah, basically, the idea with this is like, widgets are super accessible. And I'm so glad that that's kind of where I started, was building those widgets. Because my friend Seke, who's a designer, he built a widget on the side as a stream project too. And it's one of the best widgets I've seen. He was able to pull from his strengths on design 
And through the process of building the widget, he learned a lot about programming. And so on that note, engineers aren't really limited to engineering. Same with designers and design. And there's so many fun projects out there that you can utilize your strengths and help you grow your weaknesses. On that note, also with streaming. Streaming is an incredibly anxiety-inducing thing. I stepped out of sight of my comfort zone to start streaming as well. I never thought I would. And through streaming, I actually met my partner. I met all these friends. And honestly, like, I wouldn't have actually worked on anything widget related had I not had the stream to kind of work on the widgets with. And so I, I'm just super happy for that opportunity. And through this whole thing, this is my first conference talk as well. And so this is also me stepping outside of my comfort zone here too. And since I did that, I was able to meet so many wonderful people that I only knew from Twitter. And it's been so fun and so exciting and very nerve wracking. So I'm glad that I did that. But yeah, basically, I think people get really scared. And there's like a fear of failure that comes through when you're trying to do new things. And so if you just get excited and you think about the fun parts of building, you kind of remove that fear of failure from your brain and you replace it with enthusiasm for what you're working on. And so I think that's kind of the main goal, is when you do that, you step outside of your comfort zone, you work on things you normally wouldn't work on, and you get to build really awesome relationships and build really cool products. So yeah, basically all in all, working on widgets in Figma has made me a better engineer. <laughs> it's better connected me to my engineering and designer peers. It helped me be a better friend, and it made me a better person. <laughs> The last one might be a little bit too much. <laughs> I'm not saying Figma is going to make you a better person, but I'm also not saying it won't. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone. Once again, my name is True. I'm a developer advocate at Loom. I'd love for you to check out the Loom Embed plugin, not the widget. And if you're interested in following me, I'm Mewtru on all socials, except for Twitter, where I'm True Narla. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your config. Thank you very much.